Well, an automotive stock. What's good, what's bad, and what's downright ugly. Let's dig into it right now. Hello, everyone. This is Don Miller from Market Beat. I've got Thomas Hughes with us today. We're going to talk Mullen Automotive uh, stock. What's going on with the stock? Where is it going? Uh, Thomas, a lot of news about Mullen uh, almost daily. Um, lately, has it hasn't been good. Uh, the stock has lost a lot of value in the past three or four months, at least since the first of the year. Um, and what I want to do here is talk about why you've been following the stock for market beat. I think since around October, if I remember correctly, you picked it up on one of our stock screeners. You followed it pretty closely. You've seen some ups and downs. Uh, certainly they've had, they have catalysts in place that potentially could take the stock to higher levels. Let's talk about those. What kind of catalysts do they have out there? What have they brought to the table uh, for the average investor to get excited about, Thomas? Well, it's a it's a string of news that uh, suggests that they're on track to begin production. I mean, they've acquired assets. They've acquired manufacturing facilities. They've got the rights to vehicles. I think they've got uh, you know their supply chain set up. It's just a matter of them getting all these pieces put together and, and getting production started. Um, but it has been so far a lot a lot of talk and not really a lot of results yet. And that's kind of what's weighing on the stock. It's just a lack of results. Thomas, uh, I'm going to use a word here that's pretty popular on YouTube and around investing circles, uh, hopium. There's a lot of hopium uh, surrounding this stock. And I like that old song that I love says, the lure of easy money has a very strong appeal. Uh, by the way, if anybody can tell me who sings that song, put it in the comments. I'll send you a free T-shirt or something more. Um, there is a lot of hopium. Uh, people are investing hard-earned money into a stock that may or may not uh, bring a return. Um, frankly, sometimes it feels like it might be better to put uh, put your money on on black on a roulette table. But the bottom line is they need money. And they've got to need, they're going to need a lot of money to start production. Where are we at with that? Well, that's a good question because uh, it doesn't look like they have a lot of money. Uh, they said they have enough to get through their capital plans for the year, but starting up an EV operation is capital intensive. They've got, I mean, like in the range of $100 million, which isn't much compared to some companies like uh, things like Fisker and Rivian, which have billions of dollars of capital, and the analysts still fear that they don't have enough money. Uh, like you say, it, it is hopium. Uh, I have to admit that I got caught up in that a little bit too. Uh, like we talked about before, the potential catalysts make it seem like a really, really good play. And when the stock was trading at $0.10, cents, I mean, the potential for gains were enormous. And so it's easy to put a lot of hope into that. Obviously, short sellers are taking a big position in this stock. Uh, they seem to pump the stock up only to dump it back down. You know, the old pump and dump, if you will. I don't know if that's exactly what's happened, but it sure feels like that's what's happening. Um, revenue, you say, is going to start this summer, uh, or at least they they hope it's going to start this summer. Um do they have enough money to even get to the summer or the middle of the summer? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's anybody's guess. Uh, the cash burn for the previous quarter was sufficient enough to pretty much eat up the capital that they have remaining in this quarter. Um, so really it looks like they're, they're rushing towards a cliff where, where maybe they're able to jump across to the next side and get productions to then bring revenue but they might get right to the finish line and run out of cash and have no way to, to cross it. It's just, it's, it's kind of what we're waiting for right now. Thomas, I, I'm going to say something here uh, that's going to sound like I'm a financial advisor. I'm not that. I'm just speaking my own mind here when I say this. But when I look at a stock or research a stock, there's three questions that I ask myself every time. Have they made money in the past? Are they making money now? Or is there a realistic hope of them making money in the future? I usually need like two yes answers to consider a stock, mm. but producing revenue is the real catalyst, isn't it? Oh, producing revenue will be the catalyst. Um, like we've talked about, it's supposed to start this summer. 
Uh, class one and class threes are supposed to go into production into July. Um, the IGO should start selling soon. Um, so there should be revenue soon. It's just, it's just a, it's a big, what if, but certainly start- I don't think, go ahead. Well, I'm sorry. Like, I don't think the bears believe it's going to happen though, because, uh, the short interest has doubled on the stock. It was running about 10% up until a few weeks ago, maybe up until just, uh, before the, the, the reverse split, but it's trended up to about 20%. And uh, the off exchange volume is staying above 50% as far as the short sellers go. And the last time I checked, there were still ample shares available to be shorted. So uh, I think that there's a lot of uh, bearish activity in the market, and that's just not going to let up without revenue coming in. All right, Thomas, I'm going to talk about the elephant in the room now. We've avoided it till now. We've talked about money, where it was going to come from, and where they hoped it was come from, and revenue, and all the rest. But the Saudi Arabia deal, Lawrence Harge uh, has spoke around, if you will, uh, a $10 billion influx of capital to Mullen or its subsidiaries or their partnerships with Harge himself. Um, I've watched some of his uh, live videos. Uh, There's another YouTuber, uh, Financial Journey, I think Cal is his name, had him on his, his, his channel, interviewed him. Um, and what I hear is a lot of inconsistency uh, from Mr. Harge. He may be legitimate. I don't know. Uh, but do you think that's a realistic possibility that that $10 billion gets invested in a company with a market cap of, what, $125 million? Well, that's really hard to say because it's hard to say a lot of things about Mullen, especially this new subsidiary with Mr. Harge. I don't know Mr. Harge, but as you say, he does not come off as a very credible person. Um, The videos uh, uh, um, that he's been doing are inconsistent. It seems like he says that they've got uh, confirmed tentative deals. So are they confirmed or are they tentative from multiple Middle Eastern players? Who are they? We don't know who they are. We've only heard this from him, not from Mullen, like you say. And it's, it seems more and more and more like the deals are more with the new subsidiary than with Mullen itself. Um, so yeah. m- maybe, maybe it's real. I mean, we're not going to know right now. It looks I, I'll like you're you probably better me. off. I'll tell you what troubles me about the whole situation is uh, we went from, you know, something's going to be announced from Friday, uh, last week to Tuesday over the weekend, over the holiday weekend, something was going to be announced to all of a sudden, um, he feels like to me, or at least his language says, he's distancing himself from Mullen a little bit, doesn't own any shares, doesn't want any part of being in Mullen. He wants his subsidiary Mm -hmm. uh, and company that he's working with to be separate from Mullen, doesn't want anything to do with Mullen. So there's where the inconsistency lies in my mind. Uh, I don't know where it goes from here, Um, but I do know this. There's a lot of interest in the stock. Um, It gets followed closely every day. Tens of millions of shares get traded. As a matter of fact, today as we're recording, the stock pumped up a little bit, uh, 7 or 8%. I think it's down to around 2% close to the close now. Uh, So where we go from here is anybody's guess. We wanted to provide, you know, our insight at, uh, from Market Beat and what we were watching and things that you were seeing. I hope everybody has enjoyed the video. I hope that we've earned uh, a like and, and hopefully a subscribe from you. We look forward to following it just as closely as everybody is out there. Let us know in the comments what you think. We'd love to hear from you. Um, mm-hmm. Don't be afraid to disagree or agree. Uh, let's hear what you got to say and and let's take it further on to the next video. You good, Thomas? Right on. Mullen is a highly emotional market. I'm sure that somebody out there has an opinion. Please share it with us. Thanks for joining us, man. We'll talk to you next time. Right. Thanks, Don. See you next time.